Hey guys, welcome back for today's video where I want to go over three new national 2020 Democratic primary polls that have come out over the past couple of days from Monmouth Reuters as well as Emerson. I'll have links posted to these resources down in the video description. Some interesting data, a little bit of shifting around in the numbers compared to recent results. We're going to start here with these new numbers out of Monmouth. And Monmouth University, a very credible polling resource, but they don't have the largest sample sizes in these national polls. So that can lend itself to having a larger margin of error and some shifting around maybe more so than other polling resources because their sample size in this result is only 372. I'd like to see much higher sample sizes for national polls in particular, but nonetheless, it's what we have to go off of. And it shows Biden doing a bit better from where he was last month, gaining four points. He's in first place at 30%, and he's been trending in a positive direction in recent months where he went from 23 to 26, and now he's up to 30%. Bernie Sanders also trending in a positive direction over the past handful of months where he was at 15 back in September, then up to 20, then to 21, and now this one at 23 percentage points in a clear second place. Whereas Elizabeth Warren has seen her numbers halved since September, where she was at 28% in first place, and then following that, she went down to 23%, then down to 17 and now at just 14%, a very troubling sign for her campaign. Everyone else is in the single digits. Bloomberg showing a bit more strength where he was at 5% last month. This one, he's at 9%. Buttigieg taking a step back where he was at 8%, and this one down to 6 Klobuchar picks up a point to 5 Yang has been hovering right there at 3% over the past few months, and then everyone else is at 1 percentage point or less, but Biden picking up the most along with Bloomberg in this one, each of them picking up four percentage points. And as we get closer and closer to primary season, these national numbers seem to be indicating that we might be heading towards a Biden Sanders race at the top where everyone else might have a harder time joining them in this race because specifically for Biden and Sanders. So Biden has the average of the national polls in first place, and he's essentially been there throughout this entire process, whereas Sanders has been closing that gap, especially over the past month. And then on top of that, it looks like Sanders could have a lot of strength early on in Iowa, New Hampshire, and Nevada. And if that is the case, and he gets a lot of positive momentum after potentially winning in those areas, that could shrink this gap even more at the top, specifically between Biden and Sanders. And it's going to be a fascinating dynamic that's worth keeping an eye on. We could actually have a really good idea of who's going to go on and win this race before we even get to Super Tuesday. Because if Biden has success in those early states and picks up the wins, then he's essentially the front runner. He's winning the early results, and it's probably too much of a positive momentum scenario for the other candidates to catch him. But if it's Biden and Sanders at the top, and Sanders is able to close the gap potentially on the strength of those early results, then we could have a very competitive race throughout this thing and maybe things looking a bit more favorable towards Sanders in those instances. So those key early states are going to be really interesting to see how the data plays out in those results upcoming. So now moving over to the Reuters poll and Biden showing a bit more strength in this one as well. He's actually picking up five points from where he was last week, where he's in first place in this one at 24%. And then Sanders in a strong second place at 20% of support, relatively competitive there at the top with Biden. But actually in these recent Ipsos Reuters polls, Sanders actually been a little bit ahead of Biden. So this one, Biden's actually able to reclaim that first place position. Warren staying steady there in third place at 12%, followed by Bloomberg, who's at 10%. And then you have Buttigieg at 7%. And then we have Klobuchar at just three percentage points there to round things out. Now I want to wrap things up, taking a look here at this Emerson poll and some shifting around in the numbers, certainly from where we were a month ago from the national Emerson result. Biden taking a step back, losing two points to 30%, still in first place, but now within the margin of error. So technically a statistical tie at the top, but eking it out a little bit past Sanders in this instance. Bernie Sanders was able to pick up two points from the prior month's results where he's in a very strong second place at 27% and again within that margin of error. But then there's quite a bit of a gap between Biden and Sanders and the third place recipient of Elizabeth Warren at 13%. She's able to pick up one point from where she was in December. Kind of an outlier here for Andrew Yang for a national poll. And these Emerson polls in particular have been a bit more bullish towards Sanders and Yang than what a lot of the other national polls have told us throughout primary season. But actually, a lot of these other national polls have started to show a bit more bullish signs for Sanders, where that's maybe not quite as necessarily so the case for Andrew Yang, but a really nice poll here for Yang, where he's bringing in fourth place at 8%, followed by Bloomberg at 7%, Buttigieg at 6 Klobuchar at 4 and then everyone else at 1 percentage point or less. 
Yang picked up three points from last month's result. Bloomberg up four points. Buttigieg loses two points. Klobuchar gains two points. And it seems like the whole Buttigieg has a serious chance to go on and win this thing. It has probably ended at this point. We saw more so during the month of November where Buttigieg, he was showing really strong signs in Iowa and New Hampshire, and that also picked up his national numbers for a bit. But since that point in time, he's been receding back, especially with Bloomberg gaining and kind of consistently now getting past Buttigieg in a lot of these national polls. Not a great sign there for Mayor Pete. He's still putting and staking a lot of his future in this process on having success in Iowa and New Hampshire going to be a big proving grounds area for Buttigieg in those states, just like it's going to be for Sanders and Warren, and maybe a little bit less so for Biden, who has a safety net in South Carolina. And it also still has the average of the national polls in his favor, which would likely be very beneficial for him if he's able to keep that going into Super Tuesday. But then also, of course, if you get a situation where Sanders is able to build positive momentum in those early areas, then possibly he can continue to close that national gap like we have seen from him specifically over this past month. So now moving down and taking a look how the demographics break up in this Emerson poll where the 18 to 29 year olds are 47% behind Sanders, followed by Andrew Yang, who's getting 20% from these voters. And the better that Andrew Yang does, it's likely at the detriment of Bernie Sanders because he's been picking up a lot of that support among the younger age demographic, which is key for Sanders to have success. And then following that, you have Biden at 14 and Warren at 10. The 30 to 49 year old Sanders picks up 37%. Biden at 24, Warren at 11. The 50 to 64 year olds, Biden has 40%. And then Warren Sanders and Buttigieg trail that at 16, 13, and 12 percentage points respectively. And then the oldest age demographic, 65 and older. Biden picks up 47%. Warren at 14. Bloomberg at 12. And then Sanders at just 10%. And it's looking like the better that Bloomberg does, it's likely to the detriment of Joe Biden because he's picking up those older voters, those centrist voters. Whereas the better Yang does, and I pointed this out a little bit earlier, where he's picking up more so of that younger age demographic, which is likely to the detriment of Sanders. But long term, I think that the Bloomberg threat to Biden is probably a bit more significant than the Yang effect on Sanders because particularly with Bloomberg pumping in hundreds of millions of dollars of his own wealth into his ad campaign is picking up his numbers that obviously Yang can't compete with in terms of that ad buy. But then also the fact that Bloomberg is focusing on the national picture, not necessarily those earlier states, is also where Biden has his strength in terms of the national numbers, not necessarily those early state-specific results. So that also could eat away possibly into Biden's numbers. But even with Bloomberg able to pick up a decent amount of the electorate, we've still seen Biden relatively kind of in that same ballpark of where he's been throughout this process. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that as some of these other candidates have bowed out, like a Kamala Harris, a Beto O'Rourke, a Cory Booker, a Julian Castro, I think more so their support is funneling towards Joe Biden than maybe some of these other candidates. And even though Bloomberg is picking up support, I think with those other candidates bowing out and having their supporters possibly more so going towards Biden than some of these other candidates have been able to offset that. All right, now looking at the demographics based on race. So Hispanic and Latino voters have Sanders and Biden at the top there, each of them getting 33%, Bloomberg at 12, Yang at 9 Sanders leading among white voters at 30%, followed by Biden at 20, Warren at 17, Buttigieg at 10. And then the African-American vote, Biden crushing it there, 52%, followed by Sanders at 17, Warren at 12, Yang at 9. And to take a look at some of these other graphs that Emerson has put together with this data that they picked up. So they asked, will you vote for the Democratic nominee even if it is not your candidate? And with the Biden, Warren, Buttigieg, overwhelmingly, those supporters said that they're going to be voting blue no matter who. Not a big surprise, in my opinion, to see Sanders and Yang supporters not nearly as bullish on whoever the nominee might be if it's not their candidate, because particularly with Sanders and Yang, they have a lot of younger supporters, a lot of individuals that aren't necessarily registered to the Democratic Party, independents, and people that are necessarily not as likely of voters as what we get from the demographics built into some of these other camps. So that is a positive and negative clearly for Sanders and Yang, but more so for Sanders because he's actually a legitimate threat to go on and win this thing because the net positive for them is bringing in new voters into the process can perhaps make it so that they have a very strong coalition, especially in a general election matchup against Donald Trump, where if you're bringing in unlikely voters and a diverse coalition, younger voters, 
it's a net positive. But these aren't necessarily voters that are vote blue, no matter who registered Democrats, party hardliners that more so look like they're probably behind individuals like a Biden, Warren, and a Buttigieg, a bit more establishment in nature as opposed to the outsider campaigns that are being brought to the table by Sanders and Yang. So that kind of explains where those numbers might be coming from. But then also significantly more so for Yang than Sanders, where his supporters are saying they're not going to be voting for the Democratic nominee if it is not their candidate. A significantly higher number there for Yang than it is going to be for Sanders. Also, it's a more thoughtful electorate potentially for the Sanders supporters where they're like, I'm not a vote blue no matter who. I want to see who the candidate is, where they stand on the positions. And if it's better than the option that I have on the other side, then I'm going to vote for him. But I'm not ready to commit to that at this point. So that particular number is at 31%, significantly higher for Sanders than some of these other uh, candidates that we're seeing. And then also kind of interesting, take a look here at the Trump approval by gender and it's the exact opposite between the genders where you have men at 57 percent who approve of him compared to 38 percent who disapprove that's a really good number for trump among men and a bit higher than what we typically see in a lot of other approval polls whereas the female side of things trump always does really poorly among female voters where he's at 38 percent who approve compared to 58 percent who disapprove and then the all important general election head-to-head matchup sanders does the best here beating trump by two points whereas Biden and Warren are each tied with Trump at 50-50, and then you have Buttigieg losing to Donald Trump. And this kind of harkens back to the point of Bernie Sanders bringing in unlikely voters, younger voters, independent voters, kind of a more diverse coalition, and that can possibly be to the net benefit of him being the Democratic nominee over some of these other options. We're seeing it in some national polls, certainly, where Sanders is the strongest head-to-head against Trump, but that's not universally the case. Some of them are also with Biden showing the most strength, but nonetheless, both Sanders and Biden almost universally have the best head-to-head numbers against Trump as opposed to the rest of the Democratic field, which is good news for the Democratic Party because those are the two candidates that are first and second in terms of the best odds at going on and winning the nomination. And you want whoever is going to go on to win the nomination if you're a Democratic supporter, to have the best opportunity to potentially go on and defeat Donald Trump in the general election. So those are the three new national 2020 Democratic primary polls that I wanted to go through in today's video. And again, I'll have links for these resources all posted down in the video description. Consider subscribing to the YouTube channel as I continue to make these new polling update videos. And then I'm also getting really close to making my final predictions as we head into those early caucus and primary states. And then I'm also going to be doing coverage in terms of going over the results. So it's going to be a really fun time for the channel over this next handful of months. And I can't wait to work my way through it. So I appreciate you guys stopping by. And again, consider subscribing. Hope to see you guys back here for my next video.